Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, I am Jennifer and I'm an esthetician and I also own a skincare company. So that is why I decided to start this series because I have been analyzing brands for years in preparation of wanting to launch my own company and trying to follow in other people's footsteps and analyzing what did other entrepreneurs do. So it was just kind of really natural for me to always know like a lot of these brands, what their story of origin was. Yeah, today we're doing Glow Recipe. We're going to take a deep dive into the evolution of Glow Recipe and look at where did they start and where they are now because I think their story is super interesting. They have been on the leading edge of innovation for years now. It just shows you kind of like timing is everything with entrepreneurship and with starting a business. So I do have their full line here. I have tried almost all of their products, almost all of them. And... Yes, before we hop into it, subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Follow my Instagram, uh, TikTok, and my Twitter. My podcast, if you like, you know, business and politics and, and stuff like that. All my products will be linked below. You can find them on Amazon or my website. And let's just hop into it. So Glow Recipe was started by two women, two Korean women, Christine Chang and Sarah Lee, both originally from Korea. They met at L'Oreal Korea. Um, at least 10 years ago. They actually transferred to the L'Oreal New York office at the same time, which was around in 2008. And they kind of bonded over this mutual love of marketing and innovation in skincare. And obviously they have the same roots growing up in Korea. And back in 2008, 2009, this was way before the Korean skincare market came to the United States. They had this mutual love for skincare and we always meet up after work and even talk about skincare and work even after work and they just had this mutual passion for it. Years went by, 2014, it was summer 2014 and they got this idea for Glow Recipe. They got the idea because they saw the trend moving towards Korean skincare and they just had this excitement and passion towards the innovation in Korea. Korea is actually on the leading edge of innovation when it comes to skincare and they kind of had a leg up in that department and so they decided that they were going to launch a website that was basically the channel of skincare from South Korea to come to the United States. And this was back when really no one was doing it. Now you have some of the biggest Korean and Asian beauty brands. You have Soko Glam, Glow Recipe, and Peach and Lily. They were some of the first websites to kind of be that channel from Korea to the US. And they offered a variety of different brands. They went to Korea, they went to all the drugstores, all the shops, they picked out all the brands and products that they were attracted to, contacted all of them, and wound up creating contracts with nine of those brands and sold them on their website. And this went on for a couple years. They wound up officially launching GlowRecipe.com in November of 2014, so only a few months after that summer when they decided that they were going to launch. They launched in 2014 by December 2015, so one year later, they were on Shark Tank. Back in 2014 when they launched, they did about $3,000 in their first month, their first couple months, and sales had increased to around half a million by the time they went onto Shark Tank, and they valued the company at four million. And they were asking for an investment of $425,000 for 10% of their business. That, to me, is mind-blowing mind fucking blowing because they're now like I wouldn't be surprised if they're like a hundred million now I don't even know but they're up there and that would have been the deal of a century sharks you guys what the fuck were you thinking okay so basically that was what they wanted. They wanted $425,000 for 10% of their business. The best offer they got was $425,000 for 25% of their business, which they actually declined. And this was a super smart move because they already got a ton of exposure from being on Shark Tank that they thought that that was good enough. And in my opinion, it would have been. If they would have given away 25% of their company, that would have been suicide. Back when they were on Shark Tank, I remember seeing this. They had some really unique products, but the one that I remember standing out to me, they carried a brand called Blythe, Blythe, I don't know how you say it, B-L-I-T-H-E, and they carried in Sephora too. 
Well, Blythe is a Korean brand and they have great innovative products. They have a pressed serum. This is the first company I actually saw that carried a pressed serum. And that was one of the products they showcased on Shark Tank. And it was super fascinating to me. I was like, what? Actually, the next year, after the exposure and everything, their sales were a million. So that was in 2016. And during the year of 2016, they were working closely with Sephora as a almost like a mentor in order to get Korean skincare more prevalent in Sephora. And they were helping facilitate the products that they were carrying on their website and getting them into Sephora stores and even renaming the products. Blythe has a product called the Splash Mask, which I tried, I didn't like, but it's so interesting in, in actually what it is. It's like a lactic acid fluid liquid that you add a little bit to a bowl of water and you splash your face with it. And it's like a, a lactic acid exfoliation. Despite the fact that it's messy and and not practical. It's so interesting. And Sarah and Christine actually named it a splash mask. Korea, that they had a different name, but in order to kind of adapt to the American market, they helped rename things like that for the American consumer. So during the 2016 year, they were working closely with Sephora, helping facilitate these Korean brands entering into the US market through Sephora. And at some point during the year, they decided they were gonna launch their own brand. And they both had experience growing up where their grandmothers and their mothers used watermelon rind directly on their skin to cure heat rash and um, irritation and things like that. So they both had this I almost said fetish, but this connection to watermelon and knew it was good for the skin and they wanted that to be one of their launch products. So they went to Korea over eight times in during that time period of developing the Watermelon Glow Mask and they went through over 1600 formulas. They went through almost 50 different packaging renditions because all their packaging is super custom and everything. And they came to Sephora because they already had a relationship with them and they, they said, hey, this is a sample of what we're developing. Would you be interested in a partnership? And Sephora leapt on it. Like they wanted that partnership from the get-go. They knew this was gonna be successful. Sarah and Christine and Glow Recipe were on the leading edge of Korean beauty and Korean skincare coming to the US, which really happened around that 2017 year. That was like the beginning of the wave, you know? So after that, that was sealed, done deal, and they um, continued to develop the Watermelon Glow Mask, put all their resources into that, and they also developed, it for their launch, they also launched a cleanser, the Blueberry Bounce Cleanser. So this is their Blueberry Bounce Cleanser, and this is their Watermelon Glow Mask. The um, Blueberry Bounce Cleanser seems to be like an afterthought. There wasn't much talk about it. They don't talk about it much. Um, this is the only one not in glass packaging, I believe. And in May of 2017, they officially launched the Watermelon Glow Mask and the Blueberry Bounce Mask. Now, in 2017, they did 30 million just through their sales from Sephora. They got a lot of hype. Do you guys remember that watermelon glow mask when that came out? That was so hyped up. The thing with this mask and their brand in general, they developed some of the first products that combined a alpha hydroxy acids with moisturizing ingredients. So this product was obviously it's adorable. Um, you can tell the packaging is 100% custom. This is like this label is like built in here. This mask, I actually love this mask. I bought it when it launched years ago, even though it has fragrance. It's still like one of my favorite sleeping masks because it really does the job. It creates like a layer on your skin that really seals in all the moisture, but it also has alpha hydroxy acids in it. So like I said in some of my other videos, the trifecta of like plump glowing skin is if you can exfoliate gently with a chemical exfoliant and also hydrate, plump, and repair the barrier all at the same time. This product was kind of the first of its kind. First of all, we hadn't really seen sleeping masks back in 2017. This was pretty new. It was still a new phenomenon. And then to combine alpha hydroxy acids with hyaluronic acid and glycerin, and no one had really seen the <laughs> exploitation of watermelon. No one had really used watermelon as like their key ingredient. And 
it was just kind of like the perfect formula at the perfect time and this product blew up obviously i would say that the majority of their sales that 30 million dollars probably came from this product i literally hate watermelon with a passion i can't explain like there's not many things i hate in life food wise watermelon is one of those things watermelon like and me and any type of melon we are not compatible but this product and actually all of their watermelon products are so so good like they make your mouth water and the process for making this product is pretty incredible they take watermelon they de-seed it they chop it up and they put it in this preservative liquid for 30 days every day someone comes over and stirs it and makes sure it's still like evenly the liquids evenly distribute and and the watermelon gets preserved in this liquid over that time period and it's a very careful process so afterwards you're left with pretty much this product looking the way that it does this pink jelly type of product and they add hyaluronic acid they add glycerin they add other whatever else they add Hmm, interesting. January 2018, they launched this product, which is in the same brand, the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice Moisturizer. They found a brand that worked. They wanted to stick with this, and that's smart as a beginner brand. This is nice packaging. It comes in a pump. This is 90% watermelon extract, I believe they said. I actually just tried this for the first time today. It's a very, very light moisturizer. This sold out within two hours. It's a very, very light, almost like a hyaluronic acid. It smells exactly like their other products. Um, it smells to die. I have noticed their fragrance actually wears off. It actually goes away after you put the product on. It doesn't really stick around versus products like Fenty that I've used, they stay there literally all day, all day. You put it on, that's your fragrance, that's your perfume for the day. So this is a little bit different. Okay, so they launch in 2018, the Watermelon Glow Pink Juice, they sell out in two hours. And all of 2018, they did not actually launch anything else until the end of 2018 when they launched this avocado melt retinol sleeping mask this mask is 74 percent avocado it also has manuka honey it also has polyhydroxy acid they're they're one of the first companies to use phas at least on like a commercial level actually i have not used it definitely smells a little bit like avocado you can tell they were staying conservative to start they wanted to do another sleeping mask they knew what worked and sleeping masks worked for them and you can tell obviously this is all custom packaging from definitely the same factory these products were developed in in south korea and they also came out with this brand called sweet chef in december of 2018 so presumably that's what they were working on for 2018 they wanted to launch this other brand it's not a hundred percent clear why they launched a sister company usually when you are starting a company you want to put all your resources into maximizing the one brand that you know is successful and you know to start another company right away is not conventional but i don't i don't really know why they started this other company but it is a different price point and they did get into the drugstore market this is a pro this is a brand that's actually carried at target which i didn't know that and i've never seen it i'll look for it next time i go but this is a cruelty free korean skincare brand that is sold at target and it's all like you know kale spinach berries like it's like food based and there's a lot of different serums that they have so it could be just because they they wanted to capitalize on that drugstore market as well at the same time they were capitalizing on, capitalizing on that prestige market but they launched in 2018 and come january 2019 you see a huge shift in their instagram they go from posting on their instagram you know they're still selling a lot of other products on glowrecipe.com come 2019 january 2019 you see a shift they put po they're posting a lot less of the other brands and they're kind of more focusing on their own brand february of 2019 they launch the watermelon glow face spray which this is to be honest, like one of the best face sprays I've ever used. Yes, I would rather it not be fragrant, but it does smell delightful. The thing with face sprays that they get that a lot of companies don't get is you need lipids in your face spray. If you just spray water onto your face throughout the day, you're actually dehydrating your skin because the water sits on your skin and then evaporates. And when it evaporates, it takes the water from your skin with it into the air. 
So you don't want that. You want it to, when you spray something on your skin, to actually penetrate and absorb into your skin. When it has lipids, it will do that because it prevents transepidermal water loss. When your skin has some oil on it, it's not going to be able to, the water is not going to be able to take water from your cells as easily or readily. So that is one thing I love about this product. It smells exactly like the other watermelon products as well. So this is really nice because I didn't expect this, but it comes, this is also another plastic container, but it comes in like a spray that's like upside down. But I love it. The mist is so fine. The mist is so fine. This reminds me exactly of the Tatcha Dewy Luminous Silk Spray, whatever it's called. Come April, they launch the Vitamin C Serum. This is an interesting product. I have used it a couple times. For me, it's not like the most pleasant to use because it is, the base is a pineapple extract juice, pineapple juice extract, which is great for an enzymatic exfoliation. It's great for brightening, but because they add fragrance in here, it feels like you're spreading pineapple juice all over your face and you just feel like, is this gonna be sticky? Is this gonna break me out? It didn't, it hasn't irritated me, but it's just the experience of it is not very pleasant for me personally. They also charge $50 for this. I think that's quite high, but all their packaging is super custom. And it, it, like I said, it is a base of pineapple juice extract or whatever. So you know you're getting like a lot of good quality enzymes in here. It also has vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid. So in July of 2019, they announced that they are no longer going to be a channel for Korean skincare brands to come to the United States. They're going to focus 100% of their resources on their brand and glowrecipe.com turns into their website. And you can tell this by their Instagram too. Their Instagram changes to strictly glow recipe. No more, no more other, you know, Korean brands, whatever. Also mid 2019, they announced they're no longer to be making their watermelon jelly face masks, which is another product that I didn't even I didn't even touch on but they launched these incredible watermelon sleeping mat or watermelon masks right after they launched their brands they lost they let lay they launched this sheet mask which was incredibly difficult process to make these sheet masks because they actually these sheet masks were like a jelly and they were pure watermelon extract from what I remember and so there were some inconsistencies in the formula I think and that's why they had to discontinue it because they didn't know how to maintain the quality uh, on a commercial level and the consistency. So they wound up discontinuing it and they said they might at a later date revise this and come out with another type of sheet mask. But at the time, this was this, this was how it was. What I like about those sheet masks is they're biodegradable, I believe, unlike regular sheet masks, which are just a waste of life. In August of 2019, August of 2019, they launched this retinol eye sleeping mask obviously retinol is the smartest thing to put around your eye other than caffeine but for anti-aging retinol is the greatest thing to put around your eye this includes encapsulated retinol which means it's in its purest form and when you go to spread it on your eye those little encapsulated beads they pop you can't feel them it's not like a uh, it's not like you can feel them but it's microscopic and they pop and that gives you the strongest delivery and the safest delivery of retinol. And they also say this helps with milia. Not sure if it does, but that's what they said when they launched this product. In December of 2019, they launched this banana souffle moisture cream, which I have not tried. This actually looks really good. It has water and glycerin as the base. It has squalane right near the top, jojoba seed oil. It has banana water. So they're saying banana has a lot of potassium, which is good for the skin. It also has chia extract, hyaluronic acid, coconut extract, marshmallow. It has a lot of really good ingredients in it, aloe vera. It looks like a very great moisturizer, but I haven't tried it because, um, I don't know, I just haven't been drawn to it. The recipe says they don't use any dyes. So Presumably this yellow color comes from the banana and also the turmeric that's in here. But I feel like this was the first time they kind of stepped outside of like, they designed all of the other packaging to kind of match the fruit that they were, the corresponding fruit that was included in the formula. But this is the first time they kind of just put it in a standard glass jar, maybe, you know, souffle, I don't know, maybe this has some correlation with the word souffle, I'm not sure but that is notable. So 2019 was a busy year for Glow Recipe. They made a lot of changes. They only launched, you know, those two products, the retinol sleeping mask and the um, watermelon juice moisturizer. They were likely developing all these products because they launched one, two, three, 
four products in 2019 and this is these are the four products they chose brings us to 2020 so January of 2020 they had their first pop-up and this was at cult beauty which I guess is a retailer there but they did a pop-up in London in January and then in February they launched where is it here it is they launched a their first skincare makeup fusion product this is a lip product which I'm actually wearing right now and this gently exfoliates. It also kind of adapts to the color of your lips a little bit. So it looks like my lips are like a little bit more pink. You know, those like mood lip glosses we would get in back in the day. This is kind of like that. This is um, also, it smells exactly like their, all their watermelon products. So it's, it's really good. It's really nice. It's like a very lightweight moisturizing product that's also exfoliating. So yeah, in February they launched that. And then they launched this Watermelon Glow PHA and BHA Pore Tight Toner. This is a product I haven't tried because I get wary of mixing alpha hydroxy acids or exfoliating acids with anything fragrant, but they swear this is fine for sensitive skin. This is a um, exfoliating toner that's very moisturizing. I have used it on my chest and I definitely feel a difference in the texture of my skin when I use it. You can see it's very syrupy and thick, you know, it's not like a watery toner, it's more of a thick glycerin based toner again some of the first products i've seen that include polyhydroxy acid polyhydroxy acid is a less studied exfoliating acid also includes salicylic acid and they don't give a percentage or anything on this but you do feel it tingle when you apply it and what's interesting about this is that i'm looking at my phone reading the ingredients when i'm looking down but its base is actually cactus water, which is super, super cool. Similar to like prickly pear. It's a very nutrient dense ingredient and to have it as the base of your product is, it just indicates high quality to me. This isn't like a cheap formula. And this also has watermelon fruit extract as one of the main ingredients. It has glycerin, hyaluronic acid, and you can feel those too. It's like definitely humectant rich and it has salicylic acid tea tree cucumber licorice cabbage i don't know why they chose bha over like a straight aha toner maybe they just prefer that but bha typically in a small percentage it really can make your pores look tighter and it also helps to penetrate other ingredients deeper i don't personally use a lot of salicylic acid but a little bit in a formula for me is okay and then they launched these two products in July and August of this year. So they launched this in July, which I love. This is this is my personal one. This is actually my personal one. If you can see the texture, you can tell it kind of looks like ice cream. It truly does look like sorbet, like the name says. Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm. It's actually one of the first cleansing balms that I've ever seen that includes enzymes. Another way to chemically exfoliate the skin. And you do feel it tingle like a little bit, like 1%, which I love. This, compared to other cleansing balms, it's gorgeous. The texture is gorgeous. It goes on, melts everything perfectly. It just takes, like, to wash it off is just a little bit more difficult than I like. I like a cleansing balm in oil that's very easy to rinse off, that saponifies immediately, rinses off easily. This is a little bit thicker formula, and because of that, it is, when you add water to it, you can still feel it's like thick, like Vaseline almost, but then it does rinse clean and leave your skin feeling really clean but hydrated. This is a product I did not know I was going to love and I am addicted. This is the Plum Plump Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Um, I'm actually surprised they didn't launch a hyaluronic acid serum sooner. This is so amazing. I don't know. It's something about the, I just want to say ergonomics. I don't know if that's the right word, but the ease of use of using this is the like exact like way like it's exactly a, a big enough for my hand and like where my finger would go it's fun to use and it has multiple hyaluronic acid weights it does smell a little bit like plum i guess i don't really know it smells a little bit like something but that smell pretty much disappears right away and i've been using this consistently and i love it what else is in here so i just looked at the ingredients this is the shit so this reminds me of the glass skin serum by peach and lily because it combines a couple different things it doesn't have niacinamide that one does but this has five weights of hyaluronic acid it also has 
a kakadu plum, which I know from formulating my own products, I know that that is quite expensive and it's also extremely dense in vitamin C, very potent in vitamin C and very brightening. And this also has peptides in it. Um, it also has spirulina. So this is going to be hydrating and plumping in a lot of different ways. They also say it has vegan silk protein. I don't know what the F that is. We don't care. It doesn't matter. It has peptides. And a lot of times when people say vegan collagen, that's what they mean. They mean peptides. Now that's the rundown of all of their products. As you can see, this company is scaling a lot. That means they're taking their profits and they're not only buying more inventory to grow their products that they already have established, but they're taking their profits and they're buying new products and new products and new products to scale the brand so they can grow. So they reinvest profits so they can grow. And they have been doing that consistently for the last year or two, a couple years since they launched. Since they launched, looking at this brand and kind of knowing what I know about it, their main pillars, their main, their core ideology is quality skincare, uh, sustainability, cuteness, experience, and innovation. A recipe has an affinity for fruits. That is their brand. That is part of their brand as well. They, they have centered their entire brand around fruits, not just the colors. They love the fruits because they're, they're colorful, they're natural, and they have healing properties for the skin as well as they are sustainable and they resonate with people in a certain way. They do classify themselves as clean beauty. This is just a segment, a niche within the umbrella of like all the, all the different types of skincare branding, marketing angles you could have. But they also fuse science in here as well because they incorporate a lot of not just enzymes but acids and hyaluronic acid, glycerin. They use a lot of different scientific techniques. They have kind of fused science and nature into one, but you can really tell their Korean roots based on like the cuteness factor. The cuteness factor and the experience factor is a big deal in Asian skincare. A lot of Asian skincare brands, they care about the fragrance. They care about how it looks. That's why you see like those Hello Kitty and Panda skincare pumps and shit. Like all of that like cuteness that you see at Ulta in the Asian skincare aisle, that's like very big in Korea. But they wanted to adapt this obviously to an American market. So they, I think they've done a really good job at fusing those together. Sustainability wise, they um, pledge to be carbon neutral by 2022, which means they will not have any carbon footprint whatsoever. They have done this by switching to wind power and eliminating all single use paper products at their offices in New York. On their website, they actually have directions on how to recycle the products, which I thought was super nice because a lot of people don't know. Oops, a lot of people don't know. They'll just take this whole thing and they'll throw it in the garbage. And you actually have to do a couple different steps. You have to separate the top from the bottom. You have to clean out the jar and then you have to take out this sealed top in there as well. And they give you instructions on how to do that because fragrance wasn't really a thing when they launched. Now they had to come out with some some um, more information on the fragrances they use. So they don't use any phthalates or any sort of irritants in their products at all. They only use fragrance that is considered classified as non-irritating and they only use 0.5% in their formulas. Now percentages really don't mean anything because really you only need 1% of retinol maximum and it does the job. So you don't really know just because you say half a percent. It doesn't matter. We don't know but they say that it's non-irritating and I do believe them. They both worked in formulation. I've been using the products. I don't get irritated. It would be I believe it would be off-brand for them to come out with fragrance-free products that is kind of integral to the brand they've developed and that's what they like and some people like it too and while using these products I have liked it. Fragrance is not part of my core ideology but it could be a part of someone else's core ideology like Glow Recipe. It is. It happens to be. I don't like it because it's superfluous in my opinion. This is the only thing that fragrance serves. Fragrance serves to brand. Olfactory, sensory, experience has a strong like memory emotional tie so from a branding perspective yes that can be smart you can say that it is smart to use fragrance in some cases because some people will just like 
all of a sudden emotionally remember that smell and want your product. And this does serve some people. So while I personally do not like the fact that they have fragrance in everything, it has not irritated me and I can see from another perspective why it would be advantageous for them as a brand to include it. That's something they're passionate about that they like. That is my overall analysis of Glow Recipe and the evolution of Glow Recipe. I'm super excited to see what's next for them as they continue to grow and I'm also excited to check out that other brand that they've developed sweet chef that I have never heard a peep about for some reason have you guys never heard of it never heard of it so I hope this was enjoyable and I will see you guys in my next video bye and guys I just logged onto their website and they are coming out with niacinamide dew drops <gasps> Oh my god, I'm so excited. I was just like, what is going to be the next product? What's their next product? It's niacinamide.